Following the Arctic blast that saw both Owen Riegler and Catherine Reed tag great bucks in episode 19, late season's conditions stabilized, returning to the seasonal norm. As promised, Caleb Griner made the move south to hunt with Lee Abraham and his son Rafe, experiencing great action, but up to this point, no shot opportunities. At 10 years old, Bella Reed continues to spend every afternoon of Christmas vacation trying to tag her first buck of the season. Accompanied by Rye Ludwig as her cameraman, the duo work hard to get a shot at the home farm legend Big Mac, but the moment doesn't ever materialize. On the afternoon of December 31st, Bella and Mike Reed decide to switch things up after receiving MRI on the river farm. It's December 31st. Happy New Year's Eve to everybody. We have made the switch. You know, it's Saturday, so it's the first day of my nine-day stretch of hunting. And uh, Bella's been hunting every day for the last eight days. I had to work Tuesday through Friday, and uh, she didn't want to stop hunting. And Rye was gracious enough to take Bella out on the home farm these last four days. Pretty cool to, you know, see Bella want to go so bad. And they went every single day. Actually encountered Big Mac once. Uh, the conditions aren't that great right now. Um, you know, a little warmer than you like, and for late season anyway. And so the deer are kind of spread out, and some of them are on green food sources or not being driven to hit the the grain quite, quite as hard. We've got a south southeast wind tonight. We're hunting over corn, and um, on this end of the farm, this food plot, we've got this old six by six. She's still trying to decide if she wants to just fill one tag and then go back after Big Mac, or if, if the opportunity would present itself if she'd actually fill you know, both tags, but that's something she's thinking about. And then I actually have an opportunity to run into Kelsey here. He has moved back to the north side of the farm. It's about a half a mile where we were hunting him. I've got an archery tag and I've got my late muzzy tag, so I actually brought, we are, we are loaded down with weaponry here. We have my muzzle loader, got my bow, and uh, Bella's uh, the crossbow. So we each have two tags in our pocket and um, we're gonna just sit back and, and see how things unfold. We're excited, I'm excited to be back out. Bella's excited for a change of scenery and I'm super proud of her for her patience and commitment. I mean, it's, it's hard to go hunt every day like this and uh, hopefully we can get one down tonight, huh? Yeah. Right here. 
talk about taking it down to the wire he's the buck that i thought we'd have the best chance of getting out of this blind he was in this plot last night at 4 30 and then all of a sudden out of the willows right here there he was with i don't know maybe 10 minutes to go and worked his way into 20 yards and uh, bella was able to make a great shot he ran right over to the turnips looked like he fell over in the turnips so we're gonna pack up and get down and go recover your deer yes pretty excited Nine straight days of hunting for Bella. It's it's awesome. Awesome to see the persistence and the patience. And uh, even that, that was pretty nerve wracking. I mean, lights getting low and the deer's not coming in. And um, and then it all came together. Awesome job, honey. <laughs> Let's go get him, huh? What do you say? Yes. Look at that, look at that spray. It's spraying out of both sides. We know that he stopped up with the food plot up there. There he is! <laughs> nice shot, Bella. Could you put it in a more perfect spot? I know you are. Cause you just shot a giant buck. <laughs> look how awesome. Bella, look at that thing. That left antlers. Man, look at that thing. Amazing. This is just amazing. <laughs> well, Bella tracked him up and he was uh, right where we thought we saw him fall over. Went about 60, 70 yards. She made a great shot on him. And uh, I just really, really am proud of her for how patient she's been and the effort she's put in. It's uh, it's taken her a little longer. I guess, I guess, what? how many days was it last year for um, Patient X? It was nine hunts, I think. So this is your ninth hunt this year. So <laughs> this deer has been on camera so much over here. I was like, we gotta come try to get him. Uh, he was the one we were after and you know, the movement was pretty late. He came in right there at the last minute. She was able to make a great shot on him. So we're super pumped, you know, this time of year, this is, this is family time, it's great family time. My interest in deer hunting over time has really, really shifted towards building the interest in the kids and spending time with the kids and my wife out in the woods. And this is by far the best time to do it. We have Christmas break, they've got two weeks out of school and uh, it's super fun for all of us. Awesome to be successful. Yeah. What do you think? I'm just super glad that I got this buck and well, I just didn't expect him to come out, really. I thought it was just gonna be another quiet hunt because of the late action. But he did, and I got him, so. You made a great shot. Practice pays off. We love this, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, we really appreciate the support. Bye, happy new year. Following the New Year's Eve festivities that saw Bella finally catch up to her first buck of the season, Mike wastes no time in resuming his pursuit for Kelsey. Choosing to ring in the new year by moving a redneck blind into the buck's known late season range, the following day, January 2nd, finds Mike heading to the river farm to make his first sit.
it's Monday, January 2nd, and Ryan are back down at the River Bottom Farm. Yesterday we had a northeast wind, which didn't really set up for any well, anywhere down here very well. In the morning we came out, took photos of Bella's buck, the six by six, and then we got one of the redneck blinds that was on a trailer on the south side of the farm. We drug it around and, and pulled it up on this dike on the south corn plot. This is where Abby shot Rob and uh, this is where Kelsey's just been really active. This is where he was active last year, late season, and he's been active here more than anywhere else on the farm. And I was just looking at the extended forecast with the string of winds we had. This was, I wouldn't be able to hunt the soft side, so we set this blind up. Last night we went to the 28 acre piece, gave this one night's rest, and then we're, we're back in here. So tonight the wind is blowing basically straight east, which blows us straight back to the river. And most of the movement that here come out of the peninsula, they work by the natives, and then they work through this corn plot and just keep heading off to the north. The other night when we were out with my daughter Bella, we watched just tons of deer on that movement pattern. And so we should set up pretty well. The wind is swirling a little bit. So I've got the doors, uh, all the windows closed up on the blind. We're gonna try to just keep our scent bottled up as much as we can. I've got the Ozonics on the outside of the redneck, just trying to cover all of our bases here and hopefully Kelsey shows up and um, I'm hoping I can get a bow shot at him. It's a little bit warmer. Tomorrow's supposed to be 60. Yeah, and then we're gonna get a little high pressure cool front that comes in and it'll be more in the 20s and 30s. So the end of the week might end up being a little bit better, but we've had good deer movement despite the warmer conditions. Let's sit back and enjoy the evening. are exposed. There's a buck coming around. There's a buck. The following day, great conditions persist and a new first occurs for Mike Reed. Making his first ever sit while Bella is also out hunting, Mike heads to the river farm blind while Bella and Rye hunt the home farm. Both teams enjoy great action, with the peak coming at the river farm when the great buck known as Daggers walks by. Arrives January 4th and the game plan is repeated. Using the great access to the same redneck blind, Mike heads in for his third consecutive hunt. Well, it's Wednesday, January 4th. Gavin and I are tucked back into the same redneck blind we hunted last night down at the River Bottom Farm. We're after Kelsey. Nice swinging temperature today. It's, it's 32 degrees, and with the wind, it feels like 22. You know, yesterday was about 60, so nice temperature drop. The pressure's on the rise. We've had snow flurries throughout the day. So I'm hoping that's the, the change we need to get Kelsey out in front of us in daylight. We did the same thing tonight where we split up. Rye is with my wife, Catherine, on the home farm. Bella decided last minute uh, she had some other stuff she needed to do. She's back at school tomorrow. And so my wife is um, out there going after Anna's buck. We actually had pictures of Kelsey on this food plot in the middle of the night. So he's still using this area. I'm still banking on him bedding back in the peninsula. We have the same wind we had last night. It's like a west-southwest. So it kind of blows between the two food plots. Another deer I'm pretty interested in seeing here is DK. He's a five-year-old. For those of you who have followed the show, you know we've had him on the farm for a while. And we actually saw him the other night when Bella killed the six by six. 
I've been a little bit on the fence about whether or not I'd shoot him. We'll start to see. I think with a bow, he'd be really hard to pass. I think, though, being January 4th and basically having made it through the year, I think, you know, I'm kind of erring on wanting to let him pass. So anyway, it's been an internal struggle as far as that's concerned. But really looking forward to Kelsey. So hopefully he comes out first and makes it easy on me.
He dropped right there. <laughs> Kelsey is down. <laughs> oh man, I cannot believe that came together. To pass DK. <laughs> oh, thank you, buddy. The quest for Kelsey is over. That's the buck of it after all season. For all of you that have been following along, you've known of. He's kind of had my number. That's uh, that's encounter number six with him. And I've had him within 50 yards, man, at least three different times, four different times. And uh, no way I'm letting Kelsey get out of the field. You know, I, was, I wish he would have walked right up the road like these other ones right here in the bow range, but he dropped right in his tracks. I get out of here and get down and go check him out. I'm super pumped. <laughs> Did you really? Guess what happened? No way! Did Gavin shoot him? <laughs> That's a great guess. <laughs> guess guess which one I shot? Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey's dead, man. I see antlers. Oh, Kelsey. <laughs> He's still been rubbing. Look at his bases. It's just awesome. January. What's up, Rye? Right to the party. <laughs> Hard working man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Holy cow, man. What do you think about that? I think. Pretty awesome to see him up close finally. <laughs> He's got his little inside point. <laughs> well, it's certainly surreal and a bit bittersweet to be sitting behind this buck we named Kelsey. One of the more difficult deer I've uh, chased over the years. It was a fun chase this year and so many encounters. Some of the things that made him difficult were just how, how much ground he covered. I mean, he just, covered over a thousand acres and uh, just was never in one spot for very long and right when I thought I had him pinned down he'd be moving and then where he seemed to settle down in the rut uh, was challenging just because I'm still learning that side of the farm and there's not a really great area on a dry year to really pinch him down and so uh, those are some of the things that made it challenging and it's it's pretty awesome to finally catch up with him you know this is the epitome of of management. I mean, the first time I encountered this deer, one of the first times I had a video encounter was the night I actually passed Prodigy 2019. This deer was a three-year-old, and at that time, his G4s were really inside on the beams, and so we called them, you know, the inside points buck. And a uh, really nice close encounter, Prodigy walked him off. And then, as a four-year-old, saw him walking into the head of the slough. I mean, I had him on the ground walking in in the afternoon at one o'clock, and he came to 10 yards. And then last year, as a five-year-old, we elected to pass him and uh, had some encounters with him then. And then this year, I said, he's the one I'm gonna target. And he was here in Velvet and spent the whole season chasing him, really, after shooting the Poseidon buck on October 6th. And uh, he, he, made it, he made it a challenge. He made it a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, I couldn't be happier than to get him down and, and be able to put my hands on him. Well, we're gonna get him loaded up and uh, back to the house and just have the friends over and enjoy this moment a bit. It's been quite the chase this year. I'm super pumped. Three days following the River Farm celebration, back in Southern Iowa, Caleb Griner continues to spend time behind the lens. Spending time on stand with Rafe Abraham, Lee Abraham's son, the duo continue to work hard to earn an opportunity. Rafe and I are tucked in, in the blind. It is about two o'clock, January 7th. 
We've got three days left of season to make it happen, but Rafe and his dad came back up here. So where we're set up today is the same spot Rafe and I have been hunting pretty much the past couple weeks. We're overlooking a cornfield and there's a little bit of green here as well. The temperatures have dropped since last week. It's floating somewhere around the upper 20s to low 30s and it's making them hit grain a lot harder, especially the past couple days. But there's still a little bit of green food source. It's one thing when I'm making food plots, I always like to have more than one food source in that area. So what these deer are probably doing is transitioning from this green to the grain and out to this big egg back behind us. But last time we were here, we saw a summer 10, yep. right? We think he's shed and what do we got left? We got turkey foot and G3. G3 was on the cuttybacks the other day as well. So there's still two good bucks. And um, one was nice enough to lend us this youth muzzleloader again. Which one do you think we're gonna shoot first? Um, I mean, I think we're going to shoot, I think G3 is probably going to pop out You first. think G3 is going to pop yeah. out? That sounds fine by me. case of the buck fever in here but we're we are going to give it a little bit of time i think we're both pretty excited that's the biggest deer on the farm that we can kill right now so we're both pumped hopefully lee's having a good hunt check in with you guys soon right here's where you where you should have shot right here I can see 
<laughs> Is that him? I don't know. Let's go look. Oh my goodness. Can you pick him up? Why did I hit him? I hit him right there. You hit him perfectly, buddy. You hard shot him. Oh, give me some, dude. Awesome shot. Pick him up. <laughs> Can you? Oh my goodness. <gasps> nice, dude. Hey, Daddy. We went to look, but we didn't find anything. <laughs> Really? No, you tell me. <laughs> Stinker. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Lee, Lee, my feet. Lee, your son just shot an absolute stud. He hard shot him, dude. Dude, I'm so proud of you, buddy. Great, great shot, man. Thank you, Caleb. <laughs> oh my goodness. Rafe. Oh my goodness, son. That G2. <laughs> I love this. Look at that blade. That is super cool. Hey, proud of you. Good morning, guys. We got him back out here this morning to get some better uh, pics of him and just really showcase off. Uh, just how pretty of a deer really is. Just incredibly proud of, of Ray for making a, just a great shot, listening to coaching from Caleb. Uh, thank you for, for Caleb for really investing in us on the farm and taking the time to spend time with Ray while I was able to take my younger son with me. But overall, just this, uh, this deer has got a little story. Last year, he was a very aggressive buck. He, was, he came to the horn several times. They're all individuals, and that's part of, that's part of the fun process of running these deer and, and targeting them and pursuing them. He's also a deer that we were really trying to target because of uh, we have a really big deer on this farm, a four-year-old, we call it GQ Junior. And uh, I was uh, very blessed to harvest G GQ, a 204-inch deer, two years ago. And uh, of course, that was a proud day, but I mean, this is even more proud and more special, being a dream come true for me and my son to be here and really participate in the sport we love to call. Sport that really just becomes our lifestyle and something we enjoy spending his time and family. Just, we had, just had fun. Late season's a blast. I know Mike talks about it all the time with his kids. As you get older and you get more, as kids get older, you get more interested in those times than you do the rut, which is something I never thought I would say being a younger man, but at this point in time, it's just a blessing to be behind this deer, a blessing to be with my family. Uh, moving forward, GQ Junior is our pursuit for next year. And with this deer being out of the way as far as from my management purposes, it's gonna open up a lot of opportunity for GQ Junior to spread his wings and become the dominant buck and allow us to play a role for him, target him next year. Y'all stick with us. Again, thanks for watching. We appreciate y'all. Look forward to a great year. From the very beginning to the end, the 2022 season was one of the most memorable ever experienced by the Midwest Whitetail team. Ranging from the lowest of valleys to the highest of peaks, a lifetime of memories were created that will all outlast any mount on the wall. Every trip to the stand provided a new learning opportunity to sharpen our skills for the next season. And though not everyone got the opportunity they worked so hard for, the past is the past and all focus moves to looking forward. Owen Riegler experienced a season of a lifetime, tagging three great bucks, leaving what some would call a void for the coming fall. But in true Owen Riegler fashion, when one giant story closes, another moves right in to take its place. All season long, an Iowa Monarch was on Owen's radar, but with other bucks to hunt, he never stepped foot into the presumed core of the buck known as Loch Ness. With the world-class potential the buck was already showing, Owen's hope was to see if the buck could make it one more season. Only time will tell if the move was worth the risk, as trail cam photos reveal a large hematoma, and with the buck shedding well before January's end, there was only one thing to do. Waiting for the harsh winter conditions to subside, Owen fights the temptation until the welcome spring and comes up with two of the largest shed antlers he's ever found. Well, we're gonna call it right now. I'm gonna call this tree right over my shoulders where we're gonna get a crack at this buck. We've got three years of history, kinda trying to pinpoint him. 
and I think this is the spot right here, so thank you. Mike Reed's season burned hot from the very beginning when the giant buck known as Poseidon lumbered by his stand on his very first sit of the season. Roaring on, the action that followed in his pursuit for Kelsey seemingly never had a dull moment with so many heart racing memories, encounters, and punch tags in between. Taking it down to the very last moments, no better ending could have been imagined when the tight 6x5 finally made his way into range, closing the saga on the River Farm legend. When one door closes, another door opens, and much like Owen, Mike's attention shifts rapidly to his next challenge. One that comes in the form of DK, the giant frame buck that lit up the field the same night Kelsey made his last stroll. Fast forward to spring, and the annual Reed family shed hunt commences with hopes of finding the giant buck's antlers. Nobody predicted what comes next. What deer is that? JT? Yeah. Yes! Finally! Oh my goodness! JT, you play Look why I wanted to turn healthy and sad at the same time. I know it. It's so good to find them though, huh? Though not the end she envisioned, sometimes hunting's best teaching moments appear unexpectedly. After getting a salvage tag, the story for the buck known as JT closes. As the days wear on, Mike and the family continue to make many trips to the farm, working to improve the habitat for all wildlife while cultivating the next generation of hunters along the way. It isn't until one of the final burns of the season that the treasure hunt for proof that DK made it comes to an end. Left in the ash is the side with the big broken G3 and hope is reignited. Caleb Griner's challenging season hit its pinnacle moment when the chase for the pearly white antlered buck known as Hog Jr. finally came to a close. Every moment since, Caleb has put his efforts into finding the next target in the open country on one of his small permission farms. Specifically, he's trying to relocate a ghost that has haunted his memory since 2021 that is rumored to have made it through the season. Another buck with world-class potential, the hunt is on. Tyler Bellman and Justin Lubreck represented Northern Missouri with a great season from beginning to end, tagging two monster bucks along the way. Cutting back cameras revealed that multiple familiar faces triumphed through the gun seasons, and when the snows gave way to spring, cast antlers confirmed that the season ahead could be one of their best ever. Wasting no time in between, Tyler and Justin continue to create the best landscape they can, tackling project after project to give themselves another chance at living the dream. As the calendar page continues to flip, in the blink of an eye, we're right back where we want to be. On the cusp of another chance to welcome in another season, our team has never had more to look forward to. With summer preparations nearing their end, many giant bucks have returned, and we can't help but envision the days to come. New tags will be printed, and soft greens will soon be replaced by crisp, fiery oranges drifting their way slowly to the forest floor to join in the sound of the chase. We can't wait to usher in another frosty morning, living life from our stand's view, hoping we pick the right spot. Every day we inch closer to this dream and all of us live for it. Very soon, this will be our reality and we will once again be Chasing November.